It might cost you more to own an electric vehicle in certain states in the United States of America. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. Some of you might be like, uh, absolutely, duh. I live in a state where they charge very high registration fees for my electric vehicle. Some of you might be like, I'm not really sure what you're talking about, Francie, because what about of all those federal EV tax credit incentives? Well, yeah, you might be able to get, if you're lucky, $7,500 off of the top of the price of your electric vehicle, or if you're leasing, or maybe you get half of it, depending on all the EVs. But there's a chance that your state charges more for EV registration fees and slips in some electric vehicle taxes along the infrastructure and the charges you get along your way of EV ownership to recoup some of the costs that they might be losing from the gas tax. So today, I'm going to give you an idea of what states charge what for owning an EV so that we know that different states offer different tax credits, but they also might be charging you a bit more for your EV ownership. Let's plug in to figure out who, what, When, where, and why? This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. In 2024, various states in the U.S. have implemented different fee structures and incentives for electric vehicles. And the most and least expensive states for EV ownership, I'm going to pull up today based on the latest information. Now, there are 50 states, there are 50 different laws and structures and everything. So I'm going to do my best to bring you all the information basically that I could find on this and let me know if you find a better resource. But There are currently over 30 states in the U.S. that require additional registration fees from EV drivers than they do from those registering new internal combustion engines in the state. Some of those states also have an EV registration fee of over $200 or more in addition to the base vehicle registration costs. First-time EV registration in Texas can cost drivers over $400 plus the base registration fees, which could range from $50 to $800 per year, making that state one of the most expensive places in the country to register an electric car. A little bit ironic, given that there's a big old Tesla EV gigafactory down there in Austin. So state EV registration fees also can, of course, vary based on the weight of the vehicle, the age of the driver, the model year of the EV, the number of years that the vehicle has been registered consecutively because it can go down over time. So EV owners should always check their registration requirements to get a more accurate idea of the final cost before making a purchase if that's really going to uh, push you over the edge or kind of tick you off. Maybe you want to register in another state if you can. So state regulations and policies play a role in determining the cost of EV ownership. Of course, your state might have tons and tons of EV tax incentives. I'm looking at you, Colorado. Some other states might offer lower tax incentives or lower fees, and that's okay. Some are more pro-encouraging EV adoption, and others might impose higher taxes and higher registration fees. EV registration fees are typically intended to spread out the responsibility of transportation infrastructure across all drivers. You know, it takes a lot to upkeep our roads, our bridges, all of that stuff. The United States government wants to increase EV sales by 2030 by a significant factor, but state governments could have a hard time maintaining roads and infrastructure for EVs if they're only using the revenue that's available to them from the taxes from the gas that they're selling. So a gas tax is something interesting interesting that I want to talk about really quick. So the gas tax is basically the number that you're paying on top of the price of gas that your state is implementing that will go towards the upkeep of road. I am pulling some of this information from EV Hub, a cool website, Atlas EV Hub, and they did a dive into all of this data in 2024. But, uh, you know, could have changed by then. That's why I'm consulting a couple different uh, sites. But as they describe the gas tax, um, 
I'm going to pull some information from this cool website called Atlas EV Hub. And they've got this one data story here written in January of 2024 by Mo Khatib. And of course, things could have changed since January. So I'm going to be conducting a research into a couple different sites, but I do want to briefly talk about the gas tax. So basically, what is the gas tax? So this is a tax that is levied on gasoline on the sale of fuel to provide funds for highway repair and maintenance, as well as for other government infrastructure projects. So it's basically what you're paying on top of the price of a gallon of gasoline in your state that is the determined gas tax. So the fuel tax um, is imposed on the sale of fuel. In most countries, the fuel tax is imposed on fuels which are intended for transportation. So this is not only in the U.S. You'll see this across the world. And typically, like I said, they're, go they're going to be planned out by states to be used in infrastructure, but they're also projecting on what they will need. As we will find in this uh, research by EV Atlas Hub that I thought was interesting, they say, in recent decades, gas tax rates have not kept up with rising road construction and maintenance costs and increasing vehicle fuel economy, which has re resulted in a disproportionate attention on EVs as a source of declining revenue for transportation infrastructure. Now, I live in a place that I might have mentioned before in a podcast has a lot of potholes. It can really be tough for a city to keep up with infrastructure needs of even filling potholes based on the climate that definitely affects things the age of the roads but especially if you don't have enough funding going towards this gas tax and as this article is arguing perhaps it's not just that evs are trying to recoup the loss that would have been if it was an ICE car being registered, but also that perhaps for more than a decade, states have not been able to reconcile the disparities between the funds they need and the funds they're getting from the gas tax. And now there's a focus on EVs. Perhaps it is disproportionate. As this research says, uh, done by Atlas Public Policy, they are finding that the current impact of increasing EV adoption on road funding is marginal and that EV drivers are disproportionately faced with more taxes and fees than drivers of gas-powered vehicles. Now, does that sound fair to you? I don't really think so. But that's not the only fees that EV drivers are facing. Of course, uh, this is kind of put in not through the gas tax. Is that not what we're, that's not what we're paying? But other taxes and fees, including the price to register your car and perhaps taxes that are put on top of charging, especially. Uh, charging on, on the unit of kilowatt hour for the energy or even the sales tax at public EV charging infrastructure. So if your utility can tell that you're charging an EV, they might be able to tack it on there. Or of course, if you're charging at an EV charging station, you might have that tax tacked on to your final sale receipt. As they also say in this information, there is no structure preventing the overlapping of these fees, so EV drivers can unfairly be double or triple taxed. This is really interesting research, I've got to admit, so I encourage anyone to read it, the link below and read all about this. But as they say here, there is no structure preventing the overlapping of these fees, so EV drivers can unfairly be double or triple taxed fostering an inequity that drivers of gasoline-powered vehicles do not encounter. So what are we going to do about this? This does not seem equitable, equitable to me. I think that, of course, everyone should carry a bit of the cost if that's how we're going to do it for um, upkeeping the roads, but it should not be disproportionately on any member of society uh, based on what kind of car they drive. If anything, if you're driving more, maybe you should be paying more of the taxes or the big companies that are driving millions of miles every year with their transportation uh, business models. Of course, this begins to beg the question of, this is just going to make EVs less and less affordable if at the time of registration every year, there are hundreds of dollars placed on top of the normal registration fees. Affordability and accessibility become an issue here. So does your state have electricity use taxes? Does it have energy use taxes on public charging or a retail sales tax? And then also annual EV registration fees? Okay, Th these can come along at different points along the value chain of owning an EV, but 
uh, they might overlap in a way that is not exactly fair. Their research goes on to say that Utah, um, well, that these are the states of the highest EV penalties. So they start to use this language EV penalties because it does at a certain point begin to look like there's a penalty for owning EVs because EV drivers seem to be getting the brunt of the fees here. So Utah comes in at over $300 of EV penalties followed by Georgia and then Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, West Virginia, Texas, Oklahoma, and North Carolina. So those are the top 10 states with the highest EV penalties as of January 2024. This is a dynamic number because it is dependent on um, those, those three different kind of quote unquote penalties that we were talking about. So not only the registration fees, but also the fees that come in with, with charging uh, publicly and privately as well. It's important to note that some of the taxes that EV drivers face may not be intended for road infrastructure. So again, these might be those sales taxes or electricity taxes that are not dedicated to roads that are apparently, you know, what a lot of these fees and taxes are presented as trying to recoup the cost from the gas tax, which does go directly into transportation projects. If we go over here to NASDAQ site, I'm sure you've heard of that. Another article from 2024, early 2024 on January. So they also begin to list uh, the following nine states where you will pay more than other motorists each year for driving a zero emissions vehicle, a battery electric vehicle. In 2019, Alabama implemented a law charging EV owners an extra $200 each year when registering their car. And of course, this is on top of normal registration fees. So for plug-in hybrids, this fee is $100. In Arkansas, they also require EV owners to pay an additional $200 annual registration fee. It's a flat fee. Uh, applied to all EVs, no matter any differences in size or weight or age, and plug-in hybrids get the $100 extra per year. And then hybrids also pay $50 on top of that annual registration fee. In Ohio, the cost of, of registering an EV comes with a steep $200 fee as well. Hybrid drivers, additional $100. West Virginia, $200 and $100 for hybrid. In Michigan, they do use the weight-based system for EV fees. The heavier EVs over 8,000 pounds are charged an extra $240 per year, while the lighter models pay a $140 fee. For plug-in hybrids in Michigan, it also depends on weight, either $50 or $120. Of course, this is all on top of the standard registration costs for owning an electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid in these states. In Georgia, they automatically adjust their EV fees every year based on a formula that includes fuel efficiency data published by the U.S. Department of Energy. So this is a little bit more dynamic, but still. In 2023, EV owners in Georgia paid an extra fee of over $200. Plug-in hybrids don't uh, incur this fee. In Washington, EV owners pay two separate fees that add an e extra $225 to annual registration costs. The first is a $150 electric car fee that uh, the goal is to make up for that lost gas tax fee. And then on top of that, a $75 transportation electrification fee. In Texas, uh, they passed a law in 2023 where electric vehicle owners were charged an extra $400 fee at the time of initial registration. After that first year, there's an additional $200 fee each year. But yeah, so that just off the bat, it's starting to get a little bit fishy here to me where I'm wondering, all right, uh, are we really being charged as fairly as, as we should? I'm going to go over to the Tax Foundation website for some more research. This was in September of 2023, but I do think it's still relevant. Um, they do also emphasize that the more people use public roads, the more gasoline they consume, making the gas tax a well-designed user fee, right? The more gas you pay means that you're driving more, means that you're using this infrastructure more. So you should pay for it. I know that EV drivers do, they do, I know a lot of them, they're like, yeah, I want to pay my fair share. I want my roads to be well-maintained no matter where I go. But it's important that we have fairness here. Should you be penalized for driving electric by your state? It does seem like this is a little bit of the tactic here. They go on to create a map as of uh, last, as of July, 2023. So a year ago, things might've changed, but I'm not sure how dramatically they would change in a year, but honestly, things dramatically change in this industry in a year. So if you see here, they are mapping out the United States and they include 
uh, a bit of a key here that a state will be green if it has an EV t tax credit, it'll be blue if it has an EV regulation penalty, and it'll be yellow if it has a credit and a penalty. As you can see here, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 23, at least 23 states that have only an EV regulation penalty, and then about seven states that have both a credit and a penalty. So you are able to get a visualization of really where the EV regulation penalties or registration penalties, excuse me, are falling. They go on to say that, of course, everyone in the U.S. can have, have the potential to qualify for the $7,500 EV tax credit based on um, your qualifications as well as the qualifications of the EV based on the requirements for this tax credit. And some states, like I said earlier, like Colorado, offer incentives on top of that. They also might offer incentives for EVSE, at-home charging, things like that. They also have an interesting uh, document here or chart of data where you can see the additional EV registration fees by state um, and, and really be able to understand, okay, who's charging the most here. There are some that charge $100 on top. Of course, like we said, there are those states that charge 200 Alabama, Arkansas, Ohio, West Virginia, Wyoming, as of last year, 2023 in July. And this can change every year. This can change with, uh, with laws and policies and, and infrastructure, but it does seem very significant that we are a little bit critical of, th of these. In some states, fees equal out to be regular, relatively similar to the average tax that drivers would pay if they drove a car with a combustion engine that uses gasoline, for example. Um, in Washington, the gas tax in 2023 was about 50 cents per gallon. So if you consider that a resident drives 10,000, 11,000 miles a year, the car gets 35 miles per gallon. They pay about $155 in gas taxes annually. If their car gets 20 miles per gallon, they'll play co pay closer to $300 in annual gas taxes. Meanwhile, the cost to the re regular EV person, you just your registration fee for an EV in Washington is over $200. So it doesn't exactly seem to be that proportionate because it seems like we have a little bit of a uh, butting heads here, where states might have tax incentives so that you can take advantage of owning an EV, but you might be disproportionately charged based on owning an EV as well. And I think it's a good question here to understand not only your state policy, so definitely let me know what state do you live in? How does it compare to the ones that we talked about today in terms of EV ownership costs? And let me know, have you considered the financial aspects of owning an EV in your state? Of course, a lot of folks may be um, think that the price tag might be more an, of an upfront cost. You have to put in charging at home, but then from there, it, it's a lot less maintenance. You just charge at home. You can go wherever you want. Uh, so does this seem quite fair to you? Have you? Uh, does it hurt when you get your EV registration every year, when you have to renew your tags? What are the biggest factors influencing your decision when you got an EV? What, did EV registration fees come up? I think those folks who are really locked in on affordability definitely take that into consideration. Like our friend Cameron, who came onto the podcast recently when he really went into all the detail of what an EV lease would cost him for a Nissan Leaf. I wanted to look at this research here that was also uh, conducted by Atlas Public Policy. And it, it shows a little bit about where the revenues came from that were used for um, by states for highway maintenance. So as you can see here, most of it at 19.2% came from those motor fuel taxes on the state level. Behind that is the other, <laughs> the other option, um, whereas 15% came from the mo motor fuel taxes from the federal funds. Registration fees was 15.7% as well. Of course, this differs from state to state. They additionally have a nice map of the U.S. here and the battery electric fees by state. They get darker as the price goes up. We can see that all states have a little bit, almost all states have a, a, a bit of a EV fee, but they go as low as $60, $50 and as high as $225, $203, $200 on top of what you're going to pay to register your EV just as a vehicle, just your basic registration fees. 
they go on to show a map of the ratio of annual battery electric fees to gas tax rates per gallon of 2023. The states get a darker shade of blue as the disparity grows. So as they write here, this figure shows that some states, as indicated by the darker shades of blue, have much higher battery electric vehicle fees compared to their gasoline tax rates than other states. In general, a darker shade means that a state's fuel taxation policies are less favorable to EVs the value determining each state's color is the ratio of its annual battery electric fee to its per gallon gasoline tax and is only meaningful when compared across states, of course. For instance, the map shows that the ratio of 1000 in Texas, which has a $200 battery electric fee and a tax of 20 cents per gallon of gasoline. It is more than five times that of South Dakota with a value of 179. Of course, this is all relative, but um, you can definitely see that it differs from state to state. They also have an appendix of every state in their, at the time in 2023, battery electric vehicle and plug-in hybrid, as well as hybrid electric vehicle and public EV charging taxes. So what might be the solution here? Of course, us all becoming aware of this is really important. Is your state really doing what we think is fair? If there's a flat fee, is that really fair when the dynamic fee related to the gas tax varies based on how much you drive and thereby how much you are impacting the infrastructure and using it? Perhaps the only way to really make it fair would be charging EV drivers to pay a registration fee that is the same as the average gas taxes paid for the average new vehicle registered in that state. And then it could be a bit more along the lines of reality than just some number that perhaps impacts EV drivers far more than their internal combustion engine counterparts. Of course, you've got to consider that EVs do have other benefits. They are not emitting greenhouse gas emissions every time that they drive on the road. For every one gallon of gasoline burned in a car, 20 pounds of carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere. Of course, along with that, air pollution, there's also a, or a lack of air pollution with EVs. There's also a lack of noise pollution. I love the fact that EVs are quiet. Of course, we could try to also include maybe an EV's mile MPGE, but we're still trying to figure out exactly how to equate uh, the range and the efficiency of an electric vehicle with that of internal combustion engines. It's not apples to apples. And a highly efficient gasoline vehicle compared to an electric vehicle's miles per gallon equivalent could be used as uh, coming up with a value for a hypothetical gas tax. But it does mean that battery electric vehicles would probably pay far less than taxes of other drivers. But again, there's less external costs when it comes to the emissions that I was saying. Of course, EVs still contribute to wear on the roads, congestion, uh, traffic, collisions. So there are some things that are similar from ICE to EV. I think the solution here is obviously that Again, like I said, we know what's going on and we can be a voice for our policymakers to make sure that they're enacting policies, taxes, fees that are fair and not stacking and overlapping to create an, an unfair and really unequal weight carrying of these fees and taxes that are supposed to go towards transportation, but sometimes don't even go towards transportation if they're sales tax, then they're internal combustion engine friends on the road. This is dynamic, this is complicated, but it's definitely something that needs to be addressed. I found this research really interesting and I would love to know what y'all think about it. Did you really think about it this way? Did you know that it might be disproportionate to uh, really the impact that EV drivers have on the road compared to ICE cars? What do you think the solution is? I definitely wanna know. All right. I'll see y'all next time on the next episode of the Out of Spec Podcast. Thanks for tuning in for this one. I really enjoyed exploring this data with you live, basically, and hope you have a great rest of your day. Of course, I can't forget, drive safely, stay charged. See you next time. Bye-bye.